Hi everyone, this is Vivek. Often I get asked that Vivek, I am stuck at the newbie level on Code Forces. No matter how much practice I am doing, I am not really getting that rating boost. What should I do? What am I doing wrong? Right? This is a very, very common question asked by many, many beginners. And I feel like even though I have replied to many such answers on different places like LinkedIn and all, I think this deserves a proper video. So in this particular video, we'll talk about what are the key things that you need to grow beyond the newbie level, how exactly the growth looks like, and what should be your correct expectations and all, right? Because I think many people who start doing competitive programming on sites like Code Forces have very, very wrong expectations and very different mindset than what is required to actually grow. Let's move into what kind of these graphs look like. So this is actually a graph of an account I'm not going to tell which account this is because I've just hidden it off. But then earlier, back in 2017, it used to be a graph where it started at 1500 and all. But then as soon as you started giving contest, you used to get a rating drop because potentially your rating was not, your skills were not that good. And then you get a rating drop and you eventually went on to newbie. So this is for one person who started off back in 2017, but then he practiced quite a lot. He solved a lot of questions, but then eventually went on to being a newbie. And this is very, very frustrating because I understand when you are practicing and when you are solving questions, when you are learning new things and still your rating is dropping, it's super demotivating. That's the biggest problem of this particular field that it's very demotivating for beginners. Okay, so we'll talk about what can you do exactly to make sure that you go beyond this newbie range and go up higher, right? So the first advice that I have for you is it's generally an implementation issue okay it's an it's generally an implementation issue mostly what i've seen is people not being able to implement solutions in c++ being their major issue for not growing beyond a certain point okay competitive programming is mostly three things combined number one problem solving number two coding skills obviously you have to cite you have to write the code for the problem and the third thing is in stress debugging right I think it's getting a little hidden behind it, but it's in stress debugging, right? So there are these three key things that gets involved. Now, if you miss any one of them, you will not see the rating growth that you are looking for. Let's talk about each one of them. Number one, problem solving. I think there is very little problem solving involved in terms of what you need to think and how deeper do you need to go in problems less than 1200 on code forces. So to be fairly honest, not a lot of problem solving is involved except a little bit of maths, right? Second, coding skill. This is absolutely the game changer for the initial stage. When you have problems, you should be able to write codes for it, right? Most beginners, most beginners don't have good grasp on C++, STL and basic implementation details that you need to know, right? What does somebody needs to know when they start? Number one. They need to have good command on C++, loops, if else, standard static things, right? I will link a particular resource that you can follow if you want to build your C++ knowledge for beginner. Go through that particular thing, uh, this particular course. Uh, it has all the questions that is required that, that kind of takes care of every nuance that you need to learn, like looping through subarrays, looping through arrays, finding elements, doing certain things. It's absolutely available for free. And then if you complete this particular list, you will get all the different coding nuances that you actually require to learn, right? So I'll link that down below. So coding skills is definitely important. C++ knowledge is important. If you go beyond like 1000 or 1200 range, then you start needing a little bit of C++, but then you can learn that early on itself. And the third thing that I feel is uh, in stress debugging. This is another important point, which means let's suppose you write a, a certain code for a particular problem and then you like submit it, you get a wrong answer. Are you able to find the case where your code is failing on? It's a very, very crucial skill that many students lack. Reason being, I've seen students practicing a lot on lead code. Lead code gives you the, the edge cases where your code is failing. This simple practice of seeing the edge case and debugging your code is going to destroy you in competition and in actual coding tests, in actual interviews, if you're preparing for that also. Okay. I think this is one thing that you should absolutely avoid debugging your codes using known edge cases or test cases. If somebody tells you the edge cases, the, the skill of learning debugging is gone from that problem. And if you are doing that consistently, you're not learning debugging at all. Okay. So start to see how do you find cases explore what are the different verdicts, how to 
like what are the different reasons why these verdicts happen and try to like debug the code on your own without seeing the edge cases, right? Learn about stress testing, see how you can implement that in a problem if you want to. But then the improvement of debugging skills will take your rating very, very fast because in contests, many people can come up with logic, but then very few people who are at this like 1200, less than 1200 range can actually implement it bug free or debug it once the bug comes, right? So these are the three things that you want to focus on at this point in time. Uh, the coding skills, I'll, I'll link the link below. Uh, for debugging also, I have made a video on my YouTube. I'll link that down below too in the description. Let's move to the next one. This is, I feel, one of the most important advice that I have. Please practice topic-wise when you're starting at the start and please select correct topics. I see so many beginners jumping on to harder topics like data structures, dynamic programming, graphs, which is absolutely not required. Okay, this was a post I posted on LinkedIn quite a lot back, but basically what I did is I scraped the whole CF and kind of built some distributions around what kind of topics are coming at what rating range, uh, what is the frequency of recent contest and so on. So I was just doing some analysis to build a course, but then what we looked at was when you are in 19, 900 to 1400 rating range problems, the, the order of topics you can see over here is First, the most common topic is maths followed by greedy, right? They both have almost equal frequency. This is for recent times. I have not like taken things be before 20, uh, 2023 because the trends were a little different before that. In 2023, things were maths, greedy, constructive algorithm, brute force and implementation. So these are the top five topics. If you want to go beyond 1400 or at least 1200, right? The first topics that you should need to target is these five topics. You should be absolutely strong to be able to solve up till 1400 rating range problems of these five topics, okay? No, no need of DP, no need of graph, no need of fancy data structures and all, right? I see people reading, like, it's fine if you want to read and if you want to learn, that's not a problem. Uh, binary search, two pointers, these are important top techniques and stuff that are required to solve problems. But then when you are starting and when you are finding yourself getting frustrated, without seeing a growth in anything. If CF is really your target, you should target on these five particular topics, right? You have very simple filters available on CF. You can filter by rating, you can filter by these topics, select out problems. Very simple like suggestion that I give is if your rating is X, X plus 100 to X plus 400 is your zone of deliberate practice where you should filter out problems in that range for a particular topic like all any of these that you feel is the weakest for you and then grind on that 20 problems a week three problems a day should be fairly challenging if you are like somebody who is starting out but then three problems a day is a very good practice routine that you can build for yourself but then please practice topic wise see unless you are good at these four topics there is no way you are going to go to this particular rating range once you move to 1500 to 2000 that's when dp data structures these start becoming relevant and when you go to 1900 plus 20, to 2400, then greedy, maths, even these topics are still relevant, but then you get harder techniques, data structures, DP, brute force, uh, binary search, right? Uh, sorting or greedy related ideas and stuff start becoming pertinent in the problems, right? So practice topic wise, that's absolutely important. Practice on these five topics, okay? People come and tell me, Vivek, I need to practice DP. My DP is weak. Where exactly is DP coming? Because if you see the distribution, most of the DP problems that you see on code forces are in the rating range of 1500 to 2900. How exactly are you, how exactly is your rating getting determined by DP problems when there is very little DP problems being asked in 800 to 1200 rating range, right? So it's not really lack of initial knowledge of topics, it's practice on correct topics, okay? That's the second point. Let's move to the third one. This is, I think, very, very important. Keep correct expectations, right? Uh, most beginners start with very, very wrong expectations. Most beginners come with an expectation that I will put in an effort and I will see growth in my rating. That doesn't happen, it, it doesn't happen that way. It doesn't happen that way. That's, I'm gonna repeat it third for the third time. It doesn't correlate directly. You are not gonna see a linear graph that you put in effort and you're gonna go to get a rating increase. It will take time. Okay, it will take efforts and it will take resources. Like what exactly do you need to solve and all? 
obviously like a lot of lists are available you can have a look at that but then these three needs to be there and you need to see put in good amount of time to see the results okay i expect the growth beyond newbie only after let's suppose solving 100 problems on code forces how do you expect uh, that 200 problem above your rating okay how do you expect growth without doing that and to solve 100 problems with a three uh, problem per day you need 30 to 40 days right so 30 to 40 days of period you have to put in the effort and not see any growth if you are in for that then this might be a good thing to do for you or else i think if you cannot if you don't have the patience in general to put in effort and not see growth uh, this field might not be for you don't get disheartened i'll show you something okay if you can't keep practicing when you see dips like this when you are becoming newbie right this is actually my own rating graph right this is my oldest graph when i started in 2017 um, in my first year i kind of started giving contests but it dipped very very fast and uh, like i went to newbie right back then becoming newbie was bad because you used to start at 1500 right um, but if you can't keep practicing when you are over here and you still see, you're still seeing rating drop you will never see from over here that when you're over here you will never see this particular growth okay even for you it might be just that you are right now somewhere over here till this much and if you just stop over here you will never see this particular part of the graph okay so people say that it's practice absolutely it's practice but it takes a ton of patience to grow beyond this right with that, I think I have covered almost everything that I want to talk about. Again, if you have some other questions, feel free to drop them down below in the comment. I'll like answer all of them in a day, at least for sure. Uh, best of luck on the practice because I understand that it's like fairly demotivating for beginners when they don't see growth. But then uh, there are so many examples in front of you who have kind of made it through. And most probably if you're sincere enough, you will also make it through this particular phase, right? Uh, also, I wanted to just quickly announce that there is a Telegram channel that I have uh, which I am running for a song, like a long time, like thousand people are more than thousand people are like kind of over here and uh, they kind of join this weekly live sessions that I take on lead code discussion. So we kind of think about how to think for problems, how to solve problems from first principles. So if you are interested in such live discussions, they happen for free. Just drop in, uh, just drop in in that Telegram group. I'll link it down in the description. Also, um, if you have not subscribed to this channel, do subscribe it. I will keep posting more and more content. And uh, thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.